was spewing out of that hole. I already changed the seal and the o-ring in the back yesterday before doing chores and all that did is made the leak go from the back back here to the front. So now I'm taking it back apart. I was kind of hoping I didn't have to do this in order to change the o-ring and the seal in the front but I have to take it out just enough that I can get my allen wrench in there to get to the front screws on the back side get that one out that one's gonna be a real gem so I'll be back with you in a moment so I'm taking the control rod off the pedal that goes back to the valve body so I can move it forward to get it out of my way give my hands a little bit more space for working in there Trying to get the wrench over it so that nut doesn't fall down in the bottom. Be lost forever. It's not fun losing your nuts forever. There's that. Him out of the way. I can pull this rod forward. That should give me enough room. Just a little bit more room for my hands to work in there. So now my hand can fit in here better. Alright guys, I don't know what you can really see. It's pretty dark down in there. The light kind of looks funny. I got this one loose so that I can turn it with my finger now. I ended up ripping the boot off so I could see that. I can see this bolt on the back side. This is going to be a real challenge putting it back together, let me tell you what. see it but I know you guys can't see, there's that I don't see an o-ring or anything even in there I wonder if it's not just an o-ring missing on the end there hmm Interesting, I shall say. Clean off my greasy meat hooks a little bit. Let's 
see I think this cover there we go that's what I'm missing not a whole lot of room to get your hand in here there's that I just fell down and went boom. I don't know where I'm going to put you guys. Alright. There's my seal. Which is funny, it doesn't look bad. This one's missing an o-ring too. I'm not seeing the o-ring. surface. Alright. Are we recording now, finally? I don't know what happened, but for some reason it wasn't recording my putting this thing back together here. <sighs> so, I got... focus camera that's all put back together right there back sides all put back together that one right there so now I'm gonna start this thing and see if oil spews out of it because it was running out which you guys saw on yesterday's video or the video I put up previously with oil running out the back hole. Well, it's running out just fast out of the front, so I'm gonna climb up here and start this thing and see if we can see any leaks. Cross our fingers. Is why this oil leak has been such a pain to find <clears throat> so yesterday I put that seal in it and it stopped leaking from the back started leaking from the front and this has been a three-hour project this morning you know probably not quite three hours two hours <clears throat> but I didn't know how long it was gonna take to get that front all ripped apart I had to get the cows fed so I took off with it leaking and I figured well hopefully I don't run out of oil as soon as I started driving, it quit leaking. Don't know how or why. I mean, <clears throat> it was still somewhat leaking, but not running out like it was when I first started it. So I did chores. And of course, I have that cover off the side, and oil would run out. Well, it run for so long, then it quit running. When I brought it back in last night, lifted the cab back up and ran it, it was barely leaking at all. 
So this morning, before I started tearing it all apart, I fired this thing up, running out like crazy. So I don't know why it would be leaking like that when it's cold. I don't know if there's like a bypass valve or something on here that, you know, until you get moving, it's building up a pressure. I have no idea. Honestly, I don't know that much about hydraulics. I understand how they work, but I don't know that much about them. <clears throat> so I don't really know on that. And that's why it's been so hard to find this leak. And being that back cap with the centering springs was running out the back. It was draining on that hose. That's why that hose was wet. It wasn't running down the side of the machine. And the funny thing is it's dripping right off that cap. So it wasn't really even necessarily running down the back of the spool valve assembly. So that's why it's been such a pain to find. And just by chance yesterday, I saw it running and I've never checked it cold I've always checked it warm right as soon as you're done using it so that was it I'm assuming hopefully this fixes it um, it was $50 for that seal kit and the funny thing is it came with three o-rings I have no clue where the o-rings go um, I put one on the back side of that cap it kind of fit there perfect but I cannot see anywhere where an o-ring would go in the front so I only put the one o-ring in the back and replaced the two seals at each end. I don't know I don't know what else where those other two o-rings could possibly go. So I don't know. Hopefully we can get through a winter with it. And possibly during the summer when I don't need it every day, I might take all that out and rebuild it on a bench. Maybe talk to Bobcat and see if I can't get a diagram of how those go together. <clears throat> see if I can't figure out exactly where those o-rings go because the o-rings and here's the o-rings all three of them are the same size and then they come with three different size of these seals which these ones are the wrong size and the ones I put in there are the right size that matched the one that I took out there um, so I don't know like I say I put one of those in the back of that cap which was kind of guessing but where I put it on that cap isn't going to prevent that uh, hole from weeping I don't think unless it's pushing on something just right I have no idea but I like I say I don't know where the where the these other two would possibly go or one of them and like I say all three are the same size so I'm sure there's somebody else that's rebuilt them and knows but I don't and I couldn't find any real good videos on YouTube even that, that really showed how to rebuild them. There's a couple videos that kind of give you a good idea, but nowhere on any of their videos did I see where they put these O-rings, and these seals are pretty self-explanatory how to change them. So the videos that I saw, you know, I found four or five different ones, none specifically for a 763. Um, so I don't really know where these ones go. If any of you, I, I'm sure like CE, you probably know because you're well versed in hydraulics. I am not. You might know where those would go. Um, maybe it's brand specific, I don't know, but a lot of times these spool valves are pretty universal, I would think. So anyhow, hopefully this gets me through till spring without spewing your oil everywhere, marking your territory. And... Like I say, possibly this summer. When it's not getting used every day, we'll take it all out. But right now, I'm, I'm really, I want to thank Jake Ziegler for <clears throat> talking to me about this too, pre-tearing it apart. Um, he suggested probably taking the whole thing out. And that's a great idea, but with all these steel lines, I was really afraid that I'd have another issue if I tore it all out right now and I need it every day. So I'll probably tear it out during the summer when it's not a, when I don't need it every day. It's not a big rush or if one of these lines break or something. I mean, they don't look terrible. So before I'm going to tear it apart, I probably soak it all down with oil so it can soak into those steel lines. So I don't have to heat treat anything or heat shock or whatever you want to call it to get anything apart without twisting it. But anyways, I think we've got it. I hope we've got it. Knock on wood, we've got it. 
So I'm gonna leave that cover off for a couple days and run it and just see if it leaks any more oil. We're supposed to have minus 30 wind chills tomorrow or Thursdays and it's it's really cold out right now so I'm not about to go out and give it a bath. But if we warm back up here one of these days I'll probably wash it all out good just so I can see if there's anything leaking again. So anyways hopefully we've got it and I'm really considering a different or a backup either backup skid steer or a backup loader tractor. The 4020 is okay, but it's not, I mean, it's it's a great tractor for doing a lot of loader work, but for feeding and stuff, uh, it's not the greatest. It's all right, but in my small lots, it's hard to get him in and out and around, so I'm still, still pondering the idea of buying like a 5420 or a 5425, something like that, so something that has a cab with heat that I can feed in the wintertime and do other things with. It's kind of goofy to buy two skid steers. If I could buy another loader tractor that's more user friendly that could do a lot of other things, it might be better off that road. But Yeah, so this is what she's looking like guys. I don't know what happened to my camera. I recorded putting all that back together. It told me it was recording but it didn't uh, save any of the footage. So I ended up going and stealing the SD card out of my uh, Go vision glasses that's what's in there right now so I don't know if the SD cards messed up or what let's see if I can get the any of the other footage off of it it showed me that the front videos were still on there so who knows anyways thanks for watching stay tuned for more y'all have a great day catch you on the next one